Sebastian Ogurek, I am the a journalist from Gazeta Wyborcza, and I'm invited to host this debate. Is digitization the way to improve economic resilience, resilience facing the war in Ukraine? Our host would be Marta Poślat from Google, Julia Potorska, and Mark Tatawa, an economist. Krzysztof Gawkowski was supposed to be with us, an MP. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. All the best to you. We are talking about Ukraine, and uh, I started to analyze what has happened recently, and the greatest changes in Ukraine appeared before the war in terms of digitization because all the Zelensky campaign was based on that one element to modernize Ukraine and bring it to Europe is digitization that is making the whole country ultra modern which may seem interesting and strange in the light of the country which is one of the poorest in Europe the process started immediately after the election and was one of the successful ones because uh, they have state in the smartphone, one of Zelensky's main ideas. It, it impl was implemented last year. Paper and electronic documents were equalized in their legal force. That was a way to prevent corruption to have least contacts between uh, a clerk and citizen, they succeeded. The question is, do we need something like that in Poland? Should we follow the Ukrainian path in terms of modernizing Polish economy? Julia Potowska, if you please. Well, the answer seems to be simple, yes. Obviously, so digitization is the way to be more modern, to improve economic efficiency. Let I set a trap for you. Because I've been thinking, if I want to give to the state all my reality, in a moment you will have a situation that if I want to watch a page that should not be watched, the state will know it and block it from me. The state, in the name of cybersecurity, will review my emails. They peek into my bank accounts. I, I, I'm not very keen on that. It's not freedom direction. So the question is what state we are talking about. That is the issue of state responsibility and liability for what they are doing with the information. Obviously, considering how different the state may operate and how far it has changed in Poland, how far has trust in state changed, we can start discussing why we are doing that. If we think of digitization in the category of tool to increase efficiency, obviously so. If we think of digitization as a tool to uh, uh, control, obviously not. Marek Tatawa. I thought I would be the liberal voice, but the moderator got into my shoes and addressed certain threats for liberty. But I consent with Julia Patorska that there should be more of digitization in Poland. A lot is still to be done, as we see from different indices. When, the, when Poland is at the end of the line of European states in terms of accessibility of digital services in administration using digital technologies in economy, at the same time we should build laws that would protect us from digital technologies being abused by the state. From this perspective, I, it seems that it is vital. However, Ukraine may be a very good inspiration for us in terms of creating digital institutions. But online activity is such what we could observe during the war on the part of President Zelensky 
and uh, Ukrainian administration what not was not just physical war where Ukraine managed to push back the physical invasion against Kiev but also very successful war on the internet in terms of practice practical uh, views prevention from hostile attacks or transferring information to the Russian internet to fight against the state propaganda and winning the war in digital uh, information reality. President Zelensky is excellent with uh, social media. The new, uh, the Ukrainian administration uses new technologies perfectly to build a good image of Ukraine. So this is the winner in the propaganda, positively meaning sense, by digital technologies without that we wouldn't be able to have such a good image world involvement support for ukraine something that used to be performed by the radio when we had winston churchill speaking in vietnam more that was the tv today it's the internet and the social media we get info about what is happening from there we can be involved on the ukrainian uh, part. I'm a provocative journalist. Maria Julia uh, say it's good to build legal frameworks where the citizen is not over controlled. Is it possible to build such frames or would they always be a gap for state large institutions to bypass? Unfortunately, the technology gives unlimited possibilities. Nobody would absolutely say there is no technical possibility to build such a system. That should be the modern understanding of uh, uh, the rule of law, meaning so that the regulation on personal control uh, are legal and they leave no gaps. Today, in the world of controlling, regulating new technologies, it is said that each regulation should get through stress tests. Tech companies get lots of uh, information uh, obligations to global consumers, but all of a sudden somebody says we need to share the data, not within the world that shares our values, but with our adversaries. So it's all down to uh, classic public policy making based on trust and transparency. And I believe we can work out the rules. And somewhere on the horizon, there are platforms where we can do that. For a year now, the European American Council on Trade technology has been uh, acting. They give the hope to work out technological standards for this part of the world that shares common values. And I believe we will run away from building policies that would only serve one of our geographies. It would be the place to create good practices in terms of privacy. My first question to Julia was too easy. We are speaking about economic resilience. I frequently had discussions between two parties in Świętokrzyska Street when the minister was Mr. Kościński. That was fight for money. Should it be e-money or physical money? Should we digitize or not? The war in Ukraine proved one thing. If the system is digitized enough, there is no the total breakdown of the banking system. The system survived. Obviously, hryvna is hardly exchangeable currency. It's been so for a couple of years, but those myths that if there is war, whatever you have on the internet should vanish, uh, proved false. The war in Ukraine proved the system works because it is digitized, dispersed, and not centralized. Is it a hint for us, for Poland, how to implement further digitization in terms of money, banking system, etc.? 
resilience is a stronger concept than just digitization. Digitization may be considered a tool to measure the reality better, analyze it further, on that basis make decisions, and then take actions. That is a sort of a sequence that needs to take place. I am looking at digitization and capabilities provided by technologies as something which during the first stage of measuring and analysis allows us provides us with better opportunities to act quickly, that is, make decisions and take actions. If we draw it, the process like that, in terms of economic resilience, then technology has enormous meaning. But we cannot get away from the traditional foundations of a resilient economy related to the state budget, what's the deficit like, current accounts, what's happening with the money itself, what's the monetary policy, fiscal policy. So it is not enough to have everything di digital if simply the foundations melt down, they are no longer strong, concrete foundations, and they turn into a, a form of plasticine. So politics. No, it's not politics. It's harsh economy. But related to... Are we drawing any conclusions from what has happened in Ukraine since 2014? Different hacking processes attempts to break down system are, have been permanent. Today, power plants are shelled, but uh, digital bombs were dropped before that due to cyber attacks. We haven't had that in Poland, but we have had attacks, uh, uh, suspicious movements with critical infrastructure in the north and center of Poland where all of a sudden one of the pipelines ceased to operate. Our, do we secure our uh, power plants infrastructure in a um, reasonable way? What Minister Cieszynski is planning means he wants to peek into my mailbox to prevent Russian hackers from cheating on my grandma. It, it doesn't stick together. If I continue, well, I can't reply to that question if we are coping. I have no information on that. Someone else should be sitting here to reply properly. Pipelines. There is no clear explanation of what has happened. Well, in the light of what uh, actually happened to Nord Stream 1, Nord Stream 2, German Railway, well, the, Obviously, red flags go up that may be related, but maybe just regular malfunction that would otherwise be unnoticed. But in the present times of uncertainty, even the simplest fault is perceived differently. So far, we haven't had an, a dramatic situation since 2014 to compare, to clearly say we do not know how to manage. But considering a number of other strategies that are not well planned, for instance, how to cope with the pandemic, uh, vaccines, we may still be in doubt. So we are waiting for an explosion. I hope not. Marek Tatawa. I know no answer to this question. I hope it's affirmative. As a citizen, I would like to be sure that this is what the state deals with. I said I would be the liberal voice here, and in the system of restricted state, 
the issue of physical security, cyber security include, included, is the field of activity for the state. They shouldn't control when the shops are open, they shouldn't pay social transfers for the richer, because 500 plus go to everybody. They shouldn't own uh, factories or hotels. We've got state-owned factories and hotels. They should deal with physical security. To do so, you will need money. Where does the money come from? From rich societies. In the previous panel on green transformation, the first uh, speaker, Tom Palmer, in the light of green transformation, referred to the importance of economic growth so that the money for the transformation come from the growth. The same applies to cybersecurity. At the same time, a good source for growth is the new digital technologies. The development in Poland, there is still enormous gap for improvement, which on the one hand would improve the quality of our lives, on the other hand would enhance the growth of GDP. However, we won't read everything from the statistic. Digitization is not seen in GDP. It's difficult to calculate and show. So I believe benefits from digital technologies are far higher than you can see from the public data. The state should invest money in cybersecurity of the energy sector or other strategic sectors. Another bomb to drop. We speak of digitization. Digitization is mostly based on foreign companies, American mainly. And uh, how Ukraine can defend because of the help, international help, Poland, Germans, Americans, the UK. But I'm afraid if we speak of the resilience of Polish economy, wouldn't be uh, uh, uncertain because we cannot build digitization on our own. We are trying to build the national cloud to build our own servers, but I'm afraid it will still. A good example from Ukraine. Uh, Elon Musk, who can, using Twitter, can decide whether Crimea should be. Russian or Ukrainian, and then think what about Starlinks. Finally, he decided that he will still provide Starlinks, but that shows how fragile the situation is when we digitize, digitize something and we do not own the process. It's not diversified as compared to, to gas. Aren't you worried? I would like to take uh, Elon Musk out of this discussion, but we need to remember that it, Elon Musk won the tender for Starling, and it was by choice. We can discuss. The, the, the point is somebody in his environment, I don't know the story, made the innovation. Uh, we can argue if somebody is a hostage or not. As well as discussing how to sustain sign contracts so that these things are not taken away, but it comes from the innovative technology sector and uh, private sector. It's good because that's the way innovations are created worldwide. But isn't it that today? Uh, Russia has been putting a gas gun at us. In a moment, we'll have digital gun at our heart. There is Elon Musk, there is Facebook, which can turn down governments. There is TikTok that elected one president in Asia, a pretty controversial, controversial figure. Isn't that a new gun. This sleazy figure. Uh, well, listed companies follow different rights. Uh, those uh, in private hands different. I'm not going to explain Facebook, but it can upturn a few governments. 
when you look at Cambridge Analytics impact and results of uh, elections in the States, there are different layers in this process and technology is here and it reflects what is happening in the offline world. The debate that you are speaking about is the theme broadly discussed in Europe and the USA amongst uh, universities and politicians. Many politicians speak about strategic autonomy. The French speak about this a lot. They created a digital a sovereignty ministry for European Union, which opens the debate whether the French model would be uh, good, whether because it is from the European Union or download of the American technology is better because this is technology that is close to, uh, to us because it comes from our allies. There is technology that shares the values that we were speaking about. There are often American companies and there are more and more players in Europe. They bring in tools that you can build in. The national cloud that we're speaking about is a very good example because the national cloud operates on the basis of the Google Cloud. And Microsoft has got uh, their uh, contract with uh, OHK, so Polish cloud capacity will be built on somebody or what somebody has uh, already developed. Why can't we do it in a different way? Because innovations in a certain scale need a big outreach, big companies, troops of engineers that are able to produce good products so that they are shaped uh, in a global scale. In a global, in a local geographical scale, you cannot do it. You cannot plug it into the global system. So there is no clear cut answer, yes or no, locally, globally. You need to meet halfway to follow the values, to follow the political vector, the needs. It seems to me that using of what has been created somewhere else is a good option and to build in response to local needs. So let me refer to gas again. We're not buying gas from Russia, we have to find a different partner. So digitization may follow the same path. So if we're not taking the Chinese win, one, we might be choosing the partner that is close to our heart. As far as our worldview culture perception is concerned, this might be diversification. I would differentiate Chinese and American technologies. European Union and the States create specific transatlantic worlds. And this collaboration should be tight and close. I cannot see any threats owing to the fact that we have the presence of American technologies, as it was the case in the supply of Russian gas and the utilization of Chinese technologies. We are speaking about a private sector. sector. There are different uh, suppliers of the services. There is not a single company that the state needs to select. There is a competition of any kind. And second of all, selection of different products that are supplied by the so-called digital giants is discretionary. I cannot unsubscribe from the system where the minister will be reading my emails, but I can I subscribe from Twitter or Google or Facebook if I don't want these media to use my personal data. At the same time, there is no point in reinventing the wheel. Somebody has already made good products, let's make them. If we had attempts to create Polish social media, I don't know how many people other Albikla. There was a hundred John Paul II and strange people like from a comic book story. It's a big threat. I wouldn't overestimate uh, the role of social media in elections. Media are a very useful tool for revolutions. We had Arab world revolution that based on protests organized in social media, but at the same time in the context of the USA, 
this is looking for excuses because Hillary Clinton's campaign was weak once she engaged in discussion with Trump. So they say that technologies made her lose the election. And there is a very good example from Poland, one of the political parties from the right wing. Uh, well, their accounts were removed from Facebook, which resulted in the fact that they do not know about their activities, but they enjoy 8 to 12 percent. They create clones of the profiles that are deleted, removed, reappear on in other platforms, but still they are popular. To my liking, if their popularity was to be destroyed, it is counteractive, counterproductive, because uh, they built their identity on being digital no, condemned soldiers uh, that are excluded. This may boost their popularity. Shouldn't we think about this decision that we kind of wind up uh, popular movements with these kind of activities? Yulia, we keep talking about theory. Which elements of Polish economy require to be digitized? Banking system seems to be pretty digitized. We are the leader. Blick, what was a phenomenal idea, unprecedented, six big banks made a consent and they created it all. I'm speaking about implementation of digital banking, contactless payments, which elements of Polish economy require to increase resilience through digitalization? I agree that when it comes to the banking system, there was a quantum leap. We are ahead of many countries. It was a quantum leap. Our banking system can be modeled upon our public administration system. It's changing, it's improving. Pan pan pandemic helped things that we couldn't do for months, we were able to do them very quickly. Many things are to be done. Many things on the level of the government, but it's happening faster here. But a central level, it seems that efficiency of many institutions might increase alongside with digitization. When I think about big investment processes, where there are administrative decisions, issues, it's still paperwork, hard copy work. You wanted to speak about central transport uh, hub and the institution was posting. Let me explain. There is a photo. There was a huge truck full of cardboard boxes. This is the work that we've done. Everything has been printed. A hundred trees were destroyed. And there's a ton of paper that was used to present it. Use this photo. If you are not um, talking what we are talking about, find this photo because it's really impressive. Well, in the context about uh, backwardness, including mental backwardness, if we boast about something like this. Some time ago, I had the pleasure of working in the Ministry of Infrastructure, and I was dealing with big infrastructure projects. And indeed, documentation that goes with these projects is huge. The amount of money and analysis and papers that we have to produce in different line type projects, but it was 20 years ago. Yes, indeed, we had different possibilities. Uh, today, everything should be uh, digitized, in my opinion. We're not using a single sheet of paper, but still, we are boasting that this kind of application was filed. This is the greatest area to be improved. On the other hand, still digital capabilities are needed 
it seems to us that, well, we all have smartphones and we are able to use them, but we are not a representative group of our society. We can request the state to do strange things, but if a citizen is unable to use it, not much will happen. And this is the question associated with the companies, especially micro and small companies, uh, less to a lesser extent uh, to mid-sized companies, because this may trigger a huge revolution and can increase the efficiency of the companies, helping them to grow so that they switch from micro to small, small to large companies. This is one of the greatest pain points of our economy that these companies exist rather than grow. Therefore, we do not use full potentials, all capabilities that are attached to these companies. Marta wants to say something. You need to start with the possibilities, and this applies to companies as such. On the one hand, they should enter e-commerce. SMEs should think about cybersecurity, because we need to remember that as a matter of fact, the uh, p p probability of a giant attack on an infrastructure is uh, smaller than w just one email that may smash the activity of a micro enterprise. And there is one more very important area. All of us sitting here agree that crises create innovations. COVID was w one of the examples what happened in digitization in a health protection system services network. And the topic that we are going to speak about a lot in the months to come, that is the utilization of technology for energy efficiency. This is a food for thought. How to pay less for that, how to utilize it in a sensible way. This is the wave of digitization ahead of us. I was quite skeptical at the beginning of the COVID whether we are able to do it. And I keep my fingers crossed for this, for possibility of using the time, because we are time pressed, to use this in energy sector too. Energy sector is hugely interesting. I moved into a new house in May, so everything was spick and span, ready to use. And there is a gentleman who comes here to check the water meter that is located inside. He's wearing shoes, uh, muddy shoes, and he sends me email. So why didn't people come up with the idea to have a digital one so that a person does not come into my house? So this person shouldn't be employed. He could have better job to do. Speaking about energy transformation, what would increase our capability to prepare for this energy crisis when it comes to digitization. There are banal things like technologies that we've known, that we know that this is less energy intense compared to the old solutions. When you calculate it, it's enough to replace it. And the example that you mentioned, there are many optimizations through elimination of people's presence through technology. But these are mainly measurements and artificial intelligence that makes it possible for us to program the energy use to great scale. We are speaking about great areas, great infrastructural objects, facilities that need uh, to be operational or lit up. Artificial intelligence measures it and it makes it possible to operate whenever it's required. It is switched on whenever it is required, not because it has to operate 24 hours, seven days a week. So there is a lot of these things. And I hope that uh, nuclear energy is not a new one, but it's getting better and better owing to these technologies. This is the idea that I keep my fingers crossed for, and I believe that this discussion will gain momentum. This will be another quantum leap for Polish economy for whatever we can create here, because in Poland, there'll be no more data centers if we don't have clean energy. 
there is a huge requirement for this. <clears throat> so I hope in six months' time, our uh, talks will be more advanced than the ones today. I'd like to return to Yulia Pot what Yulia Potolska said. Your yeah, question with regard to the area of digitization. There's the digital economy and society index created by the European Union and Poland is ranked fourth from the lowest line. Italy, Bulgaria, and Romania are worst countries, and we are bottom feeders when it comes to all these areas, third or fourth. The human capital, digital capabilities in the society, accessibility, connectivity, access to fast internet, digital technology question used in business, and it comes as a paradox. We do not diverge in public services from the countries, so thanks to COVID-19, if we can speak about anything that is positive associated with pandemics, first and foremost, mRNA, the technology development for vaccination and medication and switching to digitization because it did away with impossibilism with many areas of life. They said, we couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't, we need to have a signature and a stamp. Day in, day out, everything started to be possible. In all these areas, we are the uh, end runners. The statistics on these capabilities, there is a question basic digital possibilities, one of the worst uh, results in the European Union, 54% mm, average, 26% above it. So there is huge advancement for us to do. And this index shows that we've been advancing because it was so weak in the past. So we start from a pretty low level of digitization. And the financial sector is the only uh, exception because we skipped some technologies and we started using cards. When I left for United Kingdom, I learned how a checkbook worked. It was 2007. So in Poland, I pay card and I had to pay check at my university. And I had to learn how to do it. United Kingdom, we are ahead of them. This is the ESI index, very interesting one. Let me return to the banks and ask me what are the other elements where we can have this quantum leap, this frog leap or kangaroo leap? Where can we have a digital leap or jump to be ahead of the elements not worth losing time for? Digital giants fight for metaverse and introduction, whatever the name you attach to it. Is it Superberg's uh, words or somebody else? Uh, should we uh, put these solutions high in the ranking list? Or is there anything, uh, any possibilities that you can see? Well, it seems to me that this uh, great leap could be made by digitizing the flow of people I think in the context of the Ukrainian war and migration, uh, uh, refugees that are forced to come to Poland. Why am I talking about it? We did have a great problem to calculate how many people actually arrived, how many went back. It's all highly manual. When we look how consuls work, how we issue Polish visas at our diplomatic outpost, it's all manual. It seems that we have technologies that could make the true difference here just for us to better trace the, the uh, people flow. I'm not a tech person, I'm an economist, not an IT specialist, but I trust it's not that difficult. The, the issue is to harness technology for a particular goal. I, I, I need to comment. It seems to me that if the state wants to do some action, and doesn't want to spend money, then they fail. Help for Ukrainians. Of course, they can arrange the personal number, 
they need the, there is a human human contact but then the documents but if they want, if somebody else wants to apply for for uh, for this dot elements, you can submit it digitally. You need to go and hand it in paper. So it's like a, a distracting factor for people to follow. If uh, so, for instance, if you want to take the money, you need to walk. The fort is not, it was not for the refugees, but for those who hosted them. But indeed, that operated strangely, even in the understanding of 500 plus, which as the mother of two, I can say it's easy to apply. And it goes in an instant. Why 40 plus? This allowance doesn't work that way, I don't know. But in the light of crisis management, because the wave of refugees, and we may expect another one soon facing winter, why didn't we use the benefits of the technology? We could have a great leap forward that might be used later on as well. It's not just for the refugee crisis, but the understanding what is happening with incoming migrants, mainly that. Marta, if you were to advise, where could we make this great leap forward? Well, in a moment, I, I can partially answer why we haven't used new technologies, because they were very personal. We remember the first weeks of the war when wise people were thinking how to use new technologies to count who has come, where has gone, and that was this gray privacy area. And the whole uh, IT uh, community spoke about it. Uh, mobile operators supported by uh, disclosing signals they could uh, detect, and that is a part of the discussion we started. How far are we ready to give up our privacy for uh, efficient operations? At the same time, I believe we should mention our M Abivatel, M citizen, uh, and we have the Ukrainian counterpart, and all of a the sudden they can work in unison and somehow facilitated the processes. You asked about the metaverse. For me, it's more like, is it another big thing? I, I don't think it's a tool that can enter other areas. I believe it opens new space. And I trust this discussion is very fresh. fresh. Companies, states are very much are uh, interested in this immersion. The Polish government said it would cooperate in educational uh, uh, solution. My, my answer may be boring, but we need to start the frog leaps in digital skills, including underrepresented groups in technologies. That means women in education, technical education, Today, 45% of IT companies declare shortage of staff, too few graduates all the time. If there is a natural group to be uh, included and they don't, there is a good method to include uh, refugees of both sexes. Our IT market uh, is so open, they do not require five year studies. Sometimes, even vocational schools uh, 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 would do. So, in every area, we need to go forward. It would be unfair only to point out one. So, a compulsory programming at the graduation school graduation certificate. I think that the, the, the Polish schools offer a lot of tools. The greater challenge is lifelong learning, uh, changing industries, and people who left the uh, formal education system 
had the feeling they had the tools but we are at a different place today it's, it's a total shift of thinking about education when i learned it at school somebody taught me how to use word processor i went to work i had to use different tools and i was sort of blocked but that i was unable to work with with, with uh, another uh, app i would prefer to be learned technology, cybersecurity, to know how to use them in general. So the market is offering lots and lots of skills. We as the company, our competitors, we offer uh, uh, trainings from MSc students, different profiles. The state has a role to play. Each employer has a role to play. Uh, learning by doing, the courage to undergo the digital transition. And getting back to, to our essential question, we are in a crisis, and I believe it will push us to innovativeness, and we will have to learn new skills. I was taught how to play Wolfenstein uh, at IT classes, and I became a journalist. Marek, I will not point out a single area for the leap. From the EU index we read, we still have huge area to improve any field, so we need to act uh, in many fronts, but it's not going to be the role of the public sector, but primarily that of the private one and some people's choices. Let me address the Ukrainian issue and the main topic uh, regarding refugees. One legal barrier, as you mentioned, is that GDPR and other regulations would make such tools illegal, so unable to be created. On the other hand, Developing such programs takes time. In the beginning of the war, I was in contact with people with the US and Canada who had a very good idea at that time, let's make a system of matching, connecting people, special portal to com linking people with flats, works, jobs. It was sounded okay. On the first, second day, they presented a concept. I said, start working. They started working, start building the things after a couple of days. The problem was solved by groups on Facebook that emerged spontaneously because that the natural uh, method is the easiest, most convenient. I often see spaces in the cities where people uh, uh, make their path along the uh, lawn. And uh, why not to put uh, uh, cobblestones there if people found that it would be the most effective way to a bus stop or a uh, uh, store and uh, legalize that uh, path. Instead of that, we build a fence. And the same, it was exactly with uh, great ideas from different wise people from the world of technology. Let's do it like that, or let's do it that way. Let's work several hours a day so that do, uh, we can do it in 10, 15 weeks. And people manage to do it somehow bottom up. And I believe that should be uh, hope for in terms of education. I believe there is enormous space, but I would pay attention not to education at school because the kids would learn by themselves through YouTube and other places, but for the elderly so that we create clear deadlines also within the published legal system that certain things have to be digital from one moment so we do not accept paper, we do not accept stamps. and. To do that, you need to minimize the group for whom that would be a barrier and trust. This is on the side of the elderly that are uh, plentiful in Poland, would be still more. That is the problem. I would like to add one more thing, how we can do it. We are at the very end of robotization, automization of the Polish industry. I know we are compared to Hungarians and Slovakians, they are better where well, they have plenty of automotive industry and much of it is robotized, but I cannot see that we as the country go in this direction. Pol the Polish deal uh, has many positives. One of them was the robotization credit. And I believe that can be a kind of a force skill to make it faster than other countries do and to make it our hallmark. Would you see the same opportunity, Julia? Obviously so. I believe we still have 
this thinking, old thinking, even though the situation has changed, nobody perhaps sees that in statistics on employment and professional activity and unemployment. But for many years, we had this feeling that we have an employee, a number of employees who will come, work for little money, labor cost is low, so it's good to invest. I believe this is changing remarkably, and uh, the reality of the labor market will be something that would uh, truly affect our thinking of replacing humans wherever possible with robots, but that requires uh, remarkable awareness on the part of the business that that is possible at all. That can change our reality in the business and that we are a bit back to the fact the awareness is not uh, big, that companies are uh, stuck in, in their operations. For three decades, we, we have been accustomed to economic growth without seri serious challenges. The economic crisis is like a, a sweep that removes those who do not want to modernize, who do not want to improve efficiency. But as a rule, the economy should uh, come out stronger because those who survive would be more focused on new technologies. As an anecdote, some eight months ago, I had a debate, I ran a debate. I had two presidents of large police corporations, representatives of the labor market. Finally, I asked them, throughout the debate, we heard complaints, the, the employees market is about to finish. And so I ask, if there is a problem with the employees market, so we should automat automatize processes, and they said, no, 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 it's a huge problem. It cannot be overcome. I think it's a true remark because in many rankings, robotization, automatization, Poland is very low among developed countries. But please remember, we are one of the poorer developed countries. So some of the processes will become not to appear naturally without any robotization credit, just because some factories will be closed, new more and automotive will open together with the economic growth and increasing the level of wealth in Poland, because that's the way companies do when they build new companies. The uh, Economic Lib uh, Liberty Foundation is related to Preglas uh, Pain Factory, and their policy is that each new factory is still more uh, uh, up-to-date, uh, robotized, but still they still have factories uh, that are several years old, and they will not demolish those. They will wait until they come to their natural end. I believe we are in the very place uh, Marek speaks about. In the developed countries, nobody cries over the level of uh, robotization or automatization. The, the market focuses what happens if there is too much of that. People will start losing jobs, they will not have time to uh, requalify. It's our, the opportunity for us to run the process smart. And I need to also tell my best story about lack of robotization and automatization. Uh, in the Budapest Metro, still a, a person, a living person, validates your tickets. And I spoke to Hungarians and I asked them, it would be losing certain number of jobs in the city, but even the uh, people of Budapest demanded it's, it's a part of city life. And just like Marek said about uh, factories that you do not close, some elements will remain that are worth protecting. Well, technology will never replace the man. But will we leap at all if we will follow the mainstream rather than looking for a bypass? You say it's going to be a process. Isn't that an opportunity to intensify the process? Well, I believe the state is providing us with tools. As you say, the Polish deal includes credits, incentives, and I trust that the free market will make decision and know how to run the process. I would see no compulsory system that companies have to uh, run processes. They know their specifics best. There is another question 
what is the role of the industry policy? Is it our economic big bad? Is it something the state wants to focus on? I believe the Czech Republic and Slovakia enjoy higher indicators because the German car manufacturers have factories there, so it is not their own innovation. Finally, politics, obviously. I must admit that digitization processes in Poland happened when we had a strong person with a vision. We could argue with her, discuss, but there had to be a good representative of digitization. There was a ministry for that. I mean here, Ms. Trzezinska, uh, during her times, a lot of things accelerated. She, she built the foundation for what happened later. Afterwards, there was a time of slowdown, and today we speak, the gossip says, that Jacek Kurski would be a good digitization minister. Do you see that the state is serious about our debate? Is the digitization in Polish uh, uh, government and Polish elites treated as priority, something of extreme value? Julia. Tomato, cucumber. I have least problems to speak about it. It's worse that the governing authority deal with digitization seriously, and these should be people uh, chosen by competence, not political links. So I doubt that the former TV president would match my recommendation as a good person for digitization. At the same time, there are resources to accelerate digitization. The Polish government, through its own decisions, rejects money that could come for us from the recovery plan. And a remarkable part of this money was supposed to accelerate digitization processes. It's a political decision not to have this money in Poland. At the end, I wouldn't overestimate the role of the minister and the ministry in such processes, and that it has to be a ministry. In the US, there is no ministry of culture, while the American culture uh, copes very well in the US and worldwide. There are countries which claim the, it does too well and local culture needs to be supported. But in Ukraine, there is a visioner, Fedorov, who during his time, we could see that the direction was changed. Yes, has, having a visionary is a gr great thing, but uh, in Poland, the key was that you need to push political nominees. When you refer to Ukraine, it's, it's my last uh, word here. I have a quote for this discussion. It uh, involves Ukraine and digitization by Jakub Szymczuk, a photographer of Mr. Duda. By incident, I entered Google Maps. I clicked Mariupol. The recent Google Street Views from summer last year ago, uh, sunny, vivid city, trams, fountains, I picked at uh, notes of uh, uh, hotels and, and uh, uh, restaurants, shocking stop of time. I don't know if Google is going to do something about it, but you should introduce current version next to it just to remember. So we see how digitization may be a historic museum, a museum of what is happening in places like Ukraine. Thank you, Marek, for referring to that. Indeed, we can see the Google's role and other companies as well. I feel that you were, you were sort of asking where the digitization is in administration. One uh, option is we miss the Ministry of Digitization. Well, I'm not uh, stubborn about it. I'm wondering if digitization that is here, we, dis we are discussing it. I wonder whether it is treated seriously within the state structures. There is uh, Minister Cieszyński, Justyna Orłowska. We may have political argues about uh, Mr. Cieszyński. Ms. Orłowska is a true expert, but they do not implement everything perfectly. But apart from them, 
Is there anyone else in the government who thinks that digitization is extremely important for us? It's an opportunity. It's a way to improve the resilience of Polish economy. On a daily basis, uh, with a big team, I work with the administration, and I must say the topic is present there. There are priorities. You can see them. The amendment you mentioned on looking into your emails is from the Ministry of Defense, surprisingly. So there is a lot to discuss, but the truth is it's not a topic of energy industry, defense, in the, uh, defense, but it's, it's, it's just changing from nice to have into a must. Obviously, we all wish that during the election campaign, the parties speak about their ideas for that. Some of them have already presented their ideas. I believe the ruling party will show their own. So we can only wish that next year we talk about the new vision that everybody, private sector included, find our way. Thank you for the debate. I wish you all the best. It's not always easy to recognize. It may look like this, or like this. It may be a burden, but it is a responsibility that we embrace nonetheless. But if it means this for one person and this for someone else, maybe it ultimately means being there for one another. It isn't handed to us, but we know where to find it and how it feels how it tastes, and what it sounds like when we finally have it. It means different things to different people, but for many, it means everything. And if we all fight for it, it will eventually bring us together.
Network is, as the name suggests, a network, and it's global. We work all around the world. We're based in the U.S. We have about 159 partners in uh, the United States right now, and the bulk of our partners are outside, nearly 500 in total. Atlas Network, it connects people uh, from all over the world, defending the idea of uh, human dignity, uh, defending human rights and personal liberties. Atlas Network is focusing on, I think, the most important and moral cause in the entire world. We partner with local innovators, local leaders who understand conditions on the ground in communities facing real challenges. We look at the people from the worldwide freedom movement that are passionate, are ready to make a difference, understand local conditions, and we invest in them. At Atlas Network, we unleash individual ingenuity to enrich humanity. The United States does not have a lock on the idea of freedom and liberty. Those ideas are beyond borders. One of the main goals of Atlas Network is to eradicate poverty around the world. And we do that by investing millions of dollars in our partners' work every year. Historically, uh, wealthy nations around the world have tried to help low-income countries develop. The way we've been doing it traditionally has not really been working. So there's a movement to do development differently, and that means we need to step back as outsiders and rethink the role that we're playing in helping people in low-income countries achieve their dreams. We want to make the world a better place. We want to make the world a freer world. All of us want to leave a legacy and be part of something big to make a better world. This is exactly the work of Atlas Network. With our growing number of hundreds of successful partners, we're stronger than ever. Changing the world. Changing the world. Changing the world. Starts together with, with us. us.